Well, welcome back to the third installment of Pocket Billiards 101. Uh, today we're going to do things that, uh, you know, really uh, put your finger on what, what it takes to be a really good player. We're going to focus on basic position play. You know, what a, a good player thinks about when they're, when they're analyzing a table and how to get position. We're also going to learn the, the many nuances and secrets of English. Why, when, and how to use English. And finally, we'll learn how to calculate a bank. And I know that's a shot that you know, a lot of people have a tremendous interest in. Before we do that, I want to review two shots, because I think they're so important to becoming a good player that you simply have to have them in your arsenal. And I've mentioned several occasions that the stop shot is the most important shot in the pool. But let me kind of demonstrate why that's so. Let's just take a straight in shot on this two ball, and I'll try to stop the two, you know, uh, two ball right up in front of the two in its tracks. I do all my warm up and pull shooting checklist, swing down, take my warm up strokes. Now I only have a short distance to go, so you'll notice my Q tip is about dead center. And I'll simply let the Q go and release, and you have to stroke through it. And you notice the ball stopped dead in its tracks. But let's uh, look at a shot that's a little bit more complex. Let's move the cue back about a foot, 12 inches. Now, this particular shot, a lot of people think, well, you know, this is a little bit harder, and to get the ball to stop, I'm going to have to use a lot more force. Well, I have a little secret that a lot of good players use. Instead of using more force to stop the cue ball, they'll simply lower the cue tip on the cue ball. Let's hit it a little bit lower. So it has a little bit of backspin on the way there, but by the time it hits the 15, it'll be sliding and it'll stop right in the tracks. And you notice I used about the same stroke and the same speed on that shot. But I, I can't overemphasize how, it is, how important it is to practice that particular shot, because that will make you a much better player. Another uh, review item I want to do is the L drill. And I know I've used this extensively in my classes at the college, and I've noted that it, it really has some tremendous benefits. Not only do you practice almost every shot in pocket billiards, but I think you learn also where the pockets are. Now obviously when I shoot the six ball, it's straight in. So I'm aiming at the direct center of the pocket. Okay, That's my target. Now if I shoot the 12 or the 10 ball, you notice those are cut shots. So the actual center of the pocket changes slightly. If I shoot the 12, the center of the pocket shifts a little bit this direction. I shoot the 10 ball, it shifts a little bit that direction. But really what I want to focus on is if I shoot the 14 or the 9 with my cue ball in this position. Just where would the center of the pocket be when I'm cutting the 14 in the corner? This, this is something that uh, you know, helped raise my game a lot when I learned this. I actually had a lesson, this was about 25 years ago, from a famous pro from Illinois. But uh, the thing to remember on this shot, if I'm cutting the 14 and I'm using this as my target, I'm going to maybe wobble the ball because it'll hit the rail coming in and hang up. So the actual center of the pocket of the 14 is way over here on the right side of the pocket. So on these kind of shots, you have to learn how to slightly overcut these because the center of the pocket changes depending on the angle. Because if I hit anywhere on this side of the pocket, the ball will go in. If I hit the rail coming in, it'll probably hang up. And also, when I cut the 14, it puts left to right spin. So when it hits over here, it pulls into the pocket. So those are just some facts that can you know, help you become a better player. Get behind the 14, see where the true pocket is, back behind it, swing down on that target line, and 
And you notice it didn't hit the rail coming in, and that tells me that I hit it pretty good. Now for the nine ball, where is the center of the pocket on this shot? This side, exactly, good. So I get behind the nine ball, see exactly where I want to hit it, come back, and obviously as you learned before, the target is always a half ball up. So I swing down on my target line, and I warm up strokes. Let the cue ball go, center of the pocket. And again, that's a really good drill to learn that. Not only on the cut shot, but it teaches you where the center of the pocket is. Okay, the next uh, uh, thing we want to learn is basic position. Now, let me give you an example. Uh, one thing that uh, you learn when you play a lot of eight ball or nine ball or whatever game it is, is that being straight in is not all it's cracked up to be. In fact, in most cases, you're better off with angles. Let me give you an example. Let's say we've got a game of eight ball, and we've got stripes. And your position is this. Now, what a good player or a professional thinks about when they get in a position like this is how can I run, run all the balls and win the game on the eight ball? Now, the first thing a professional is going to think about, where do I need to get on the ten ball so I can get position on the eight ball? And that's thinking two balls ahead. Most good players actually think three balls ahead. You know, what side of the next ball do I need to get on to get to the right side of the next ball? And that's you know kind of what a what a good player is always thinking about. So on this shot, if I stop the cue ball, let's see what I've got. Now I've got almost an impossible shot. The only way I can get on the eight is if I draw all the way back. But look how easy this shot can be if you really analyze it and determine what side of the ball you need to be on. Like on this shot, all I have to do is simply roll a little bit forward, and now I simply hit a high ball shot, one rail here, one rail here, right into the line of my next shot. And that's always what you're thinking about when you're playing position. So the ball goes into the line never across the line. So it came into the rail here and right into the, look at the margin of error. I could have stopped here, 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 and I'm still good. But you never want to cross the line because your margin of error is a lot smaller, okay? Okay. The next thing I want to teach you, and this is probably one of the most important aspects of playing position. In fact, let's, let's actually use the little uh, reinforcers that I have on the table because that will give you a good idea. Now there's such a thing in pocket billiards, and a lot of teachers teach this, as a thing called an tangent line. Now if I shoot the six on the simple cut, the tangent line it's always 90 degrees from the pocket. So the tangent line would come at this angle into this diamond here. Now, in order to have the cue ball go on that tangent line, all I have to do is hit a stop shot. In other words, so the cue ball is skinny and takes that 90 degree angle. So let's, let's try it one like that. Center ball, stroke right through it, using the tangent line. Now you notice, by using the tangent line, I knew exactly where the cue ball was going, and I could figure out where it would go to the next rail. So that's how you learn to play proper <coughs> position. Okay. But, that tangent line can be changed. Let's just uh, use this as an example. Let's say the eight ball is right where that tangent line is. And I'm playing a game of eight ball right now, and I want to run out and win the game. So in order to change the tangent line in this shot, I simply need to 
use a little what? A little English low English. In other words, a little bit of draw. So I'm going to hit this one below center and just bring it in behind the eight ball. And you see how it changed the tangent line. Instead of going there, it took it right behind the eight. Let's take another example. Let's say the eight's over here. And I pretty much have that same shot. Well, if I hit here my tangent line and come way out here, I'm going to have a long shot. So to change the tangent line to get position on the eight, I'm simply going to hit this shot with high ball. So instead of coming into that spot there, it's going to hit underneath that and then just come right across the table so I have a nice easy shot on the eight ball. All I have to do is hit a little high ball and bring it right across. You see, that's how you learn how to play position. You <laughs> practice using draw and follow, but you always start starting point is the tangent line. Because, uh, you know, that's why I always say the stop shot is the most important shot in pool because it teaches you, you know, your frame of reference on, on where to move the cue ball anywhere on the table. Okay? Any questions about any of that so far? Okay. Alright, uh, let's move on and talk about English. Now, before we get into English, I do want to say with uh, great confidence that English is always a last resort, okay? In other words, I'd much rather you use follow or stop or, 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 or draw as, you know, before you would want to use English. When I talk about English, I mean hitting the ball on the left side of the ball or the right side of the ball, okay? So let me just give you an idea of what a drastic impact that English has. Let me just show you what a half tip of English will do. I'll, I'll aim at the center diamond at the head of the table. And I'll hit just a half a tip of English. And I want you to notice where the cue ball goes. Short of the pocket. So it changed it about a foot and a half. All right, let's try a full tip of English left in the center pocket. Let's see what happens. There's center, there's a full tip of left English. Pretty much at the pot. Okay? Now this is how you learn English because you need to know how much English and how it will affect the cue ball. Now let's try a tip and a half of left English. There's center, half, full, tip and a half. About the center of the rail for that guy. But you know what? A lot of guys like Earl Strickland and a lot of these great players will sometimes use extreme English. Now you would very rarely use this because English causes the cue ball to deflect and makes it very, very difficult to control as well as pocket the ball. But with extreme English two cue tips, I can actually take it underneath the side pocket. That's as much English as you'd ever want to use. But I just wanted you to get a feel for how much it changed. A half tip to, the, to me to here, a full tip to the pocket, tip and a half to here, and two tips to there. Okay. Is that regardless of how wide the tips are? Actually, you, pe you people that have snooker cues, you can actually apply more English than us Americans. Why is that? Because your, tip, your diameter of your shaft is so small that you're actually going to get further over on the cue ball. So still the same rule though. Same rule applies, okay. yeah. But uh, the reason for using English, let's kind of go into that. And a good way to kind of bring this to light, I'll just use this, these reinforcers down here to give you an idea. Let's take the first one. Now, remember that tangent line I was showing you? 
let's say I've got a shot like this. If I want the cue ball to speed up, well, I would need to apply what's called a running English. Now, in this particular shot, running English is always away from the pocket I'm shooting at. And it makes the cue ball hit the rail and just fly off. It actually increases the speed. So if I want to use running English on this shot, which English would that be? Right English. Okay, watch, watch what happens. I'll just use one Q-tip on the shots. And I want you to experiment with this and just learn exactly what it's going to make the cue ball do. Half a tip took me almost all the way down to the quarter pocket. Okay. Now if I use center ball, probably take me somewhere near the near the side pocket. We'll see where it lands. Right, almost. Now, let's see what inside English would do. That would be one Q-tip of left English. Anybody want to guess where the cue ball end up on this one? Probably around here somewhere, okay? One Q-tip. Now look at the difference. Left English was here, center was here, one Q-tip of right was here. That's a, you know, almost a seven foot of pool table with the difference. So you can see on most cut shots, by using English, you can actually put the cue ball anywhere on the table. In fact, that's a good drill sometimes to practice. You basically set up a shot and then put a ball you want to play position for and experiment using English on how to get position on that next ball. Another thing that English does, we've already talked about it can, how it can slow down and speed up, but it also, as you saw, it can widen the angle. But it can avoid a scratch. Let's take this shot comes up all the time. Let's say you're about to win a game of nine ball, and you get stuck with a shot like this. I've seen I've seen a lot of people struggle with this shot. Now, if I shoot the nine in the corner here. Put it about right there. If I take the tangent line, guess what? The cue ball goes straight in the side pocket. So one of the reasons that we'll use English sometime is simply to avoid a scratch. Now, in order to avoid a scratch, how, well, how would I do it here to avoid the uh, cue ball going in the side pocket? I could either use top or I could either use draw. In this case, I'll use just a little bit of draw English. Now, I could have used follow to do the same thing. In other words, I, what I did was I changed the tangent line from there to here. Now, I could also have done it this way by using high ball, depending on what position I want to get. And again, on that shot, that's another time when you know that the, the target is over here if it's not there. All right, uh, another uh, interesting thing to use English on, and this, I'll, I'll kind of set it up here because it's kind of fun to look at. This shot came up last night in, in uh, my league match that I played. But let's say you've got stripes in a game of eight ball, and the three ball is just a little bit in your way. Okay, you can see the 13, I don't think I could make it if I don't use a little English. So in order to make the 13, well, the 3 is slightly in the way. So another way to make this is I can elevate my cue slightly, like this, and as I punch down on the left side of the ball, it'll do a little bit of curve around the 3 and actually be able to make the 13. In fact, let me use one of the other cue balls so you can see the spin be a little easier. Now you can see the three is in the way, so I'm going to elevate my cue slightly with a little bit of left English. 
and I'm just going to punch down very gently. See? And you can see the ball spinning. But this is a shot that comes up a lot more than you might think. Yeah, that's about right. I'm going to curve it just slightly. I hit that last one a little too hard. Same spot. These, these balls are so clean, they don't, they don't <laughs> grab. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's something you consider. Everywhere you go is a little bit different. Now here, like you, you have a polisher and everything is in perfect condition. So you're not going to get the cue ball to grab the cloth as much. Let me set it up a little different. But you can see, if I use a little bit of left English, you hit it nice and gently. And that left English will actually throw the object ball a little bit, too. But that's a real important shot. Here's a tip that uh, took me years to figure out. I, when I was young, I knew everything, and I didn't need any instruction and all that. You know, you know what that's like, don't you? But uh, here's a shot that I learned that I had been playing this the wrong way all my life. Let's see if I can, I'll get the eight ball to use that. Here we go. Let's put the eight ball down here. And you're about to run off, you have strikes. Now, in the old days, I would look at this shot, this 10 ball, and think, Oh, that's real easy. All I have to do is make the 10 in the corner and draw it over here behind the eight. Let's see how that works out. I'm wanting to win the game, and to me, it looks, it looks like the best shot. I'll just draw it right over there. The tangent line takes it into the pocket, but I'm going to draw it right across here. I got a fairly decent position. Okay, not that bad. But there's a much easier way to play that shot. That you can't miss getting position. Probably a better way to shoot this 12 ball instead of drawing it over there is simply hitting it into the rail here, over to here, and into the line of the next shot. In other words, by drawing it over here, I'm crossing the line. My margin of error is very small. Only that, that much room. But if I shoot it this other way, into this rail, over to here, I'm going into the line on my next shot. So my margin of error is here, all the way to here. So it gives me a lot more room to play proper position. And it hits the rail, it goes towards the next you always want to go into the line for position. So I could have been anywhere in that area and still got the position. And you hit that ball from center? I used that little bit of right English in the you know, right. Yeah, the way I said it. Out. Here's another example of that. And this is a uh, A shot that people really kind of mess up on a lot. They'll have a position like this and they'll think, oh, I'll just hit the nine real thick and come down here behind the eight. That's a very dangerous shot. The reason why that's so dangerous is I can scratch and I'm going across the line instead of into it. So uh, let's see how well I can do if I just cut it thin and bring it down there. I know the speed of this table, so I did pretty good. But there's a much better way to shoot that shot. You really, what you want to do is go one, two, three rails so the cue ball goes into the line of the next shot. So I'll put a lot of right English, a little bit of high. And then I 
hit the rail and then go into the ball. And that way, there's no chance of scratch. So that's, that's kind of the way that you kind of think those shots through. Which way has the best chance of succeeding? OK, uh, banks. <laughs> and these will be fun to play with. I've got three on your drill sheet that you can look at. Uh, I'll set one up here. The first one on the left side of your drill sheet. In fact, I'll have them kind of equal to the diamonds. Now, there's a system that I favor for making bangs that you have to adjust depending on the table. You know, the cloth, the balls, uh, the rails, everything has an impact on how the balls rebound off the rails. Uh, Country Roads has almost perfect equipment now since. I guess they were recently modified so they don't bounce, so that really helps a lot, especially on banks. But the first thing you do when you're calculating a bank is look at the pocket that you want to make the ball in. And the way I, I, I tend to like to do that is I'll just lay my cue from one pocket to the other and just see the exact point where I want to make the ball. That's step number one. Step two is to find the midpoint between the object ball you're trying to bank and the pocket you're trying to make it in. So basically what I do is I swing my cue to where it intersects with that midpoint. That's step number two. And then finally, this basically tells me exactly what line I need to hit the seven ball on. I need to hit the seven ball on this parallel line. So I can actually lift up my cue bring it over here, and lay it over the seven. So if I hit the rail right there, I should have no problem in making the seven. Three steps. And again, speed will have a tremendous impact. If I hit it hard, it'll come short. If I hit it soft, it'll go long. But it works very well, and I think Phil, didn't I teach this system in our class? But, uh, Again, it's not a perfect system, but it does give you a frame of reference, a starting point. Did you go through that again? Yeah, well, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and this, by the way, is a straight bank. When you hit a cut bank, I'll go into that in a minute, it's much different. <coughs> so find exactly where you want the ball to go in, right here, and lay your cue right across the table there, into the opposite pocket. Swing it over until it intersects with the midpoint between the seven and the pocket you want to make it in, which is about right there. Use that, hit that seven ball on a parallel line, and you can kind of go over there and notice that it's right into that diamond. Boy, these rails are great. They're, they're, they don't. They, Let's look at it from the side pocket angle. It works for many things. This particular bank, I'll set it up a straight bank as well. And I have this is in the center of your diagram. But again, I want to bank the ball into the side pocket. Lay my cue across like this. And I don't do this anymore because I've done it, I've played for so long I don't need to, but I just kind of see where, where it would be without you know measuring it with my cue. But leave it in the pocket across the way, swing it over until you find the midpoint between the nine and the side pocket you're trying to make it into. Hit the nine ball in a parallel line. So just lift it up, bring it over, and you'll notice it's right into that time. And again, I'll just hit it moderate speed. <coughs> A little bit short. And again, you'll have a lot of fun practicing with that. And the main thing, it's not a perfect system, I want to emphasize that, but it does give you a starting point. Now, uh, let me just show you real quick the differences when I hit it hard and when I hit it soft like I just did. 
If I hit this bank real firm, that's going to shorten it up. It'll probably hit a couple inches to the left there. I'll just give you an example. I'll hit it in the same place on the rail. And it came up that much short. If I hit it real easy, it'll actually might, might even go a little bit long. So, you know, that's how you can kind of adjust that. But let me give you one that's not a straight bank. We call this a cut bank. And I'll set it up the same way that I did the other ones. But instead of leaving the cue ball here, let's slide it down to there. All right, now on this bank, I can calculate the same way. Got my pocket here, lay my cue across. I swing it to the midpoint between the nine and the pocket I want to bank it into. Determine where the parallel line is right on the diamond. But because I'm cutting the nine ball, the act of cutting actually puts English on the nine ball. So on this particular bank, you have to overcut it and hit it more to the right of the diamond. Because when you hit the nine on the left side, it puts left English on it, which will make it come up short. So in this particular shot, I have to overcut it just a little bit. So instead of hitting the diamond, I'm going to hit it slightly over on that. Oh, I hit that bad. <laughs> Let's try that again. Let's see. Put the cue ball down here. And again, it's not quite on the diamond. A little bit to the right of that. Yeah, about right there. And the harder I hit it, the shorter it'll come. If I hit it easy, it'll go longer. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, and that's fun to just play with. You know, uh, experiment. Set up one bank like that where you can calculate exactly where your point on the rail you want to hit, but move your cue ball from here to here. Now this shot, this bank, is the opposite. It's no longer a straight bank. This is called what people refer to as a cross bank. So on this particular bank, when I hit the right side of the 13, it's going to put right English. So when it hits the rail, it'll spin down here more. So on this shot, I actually need to hit it to the left of the diamond. You can kind of watch. And that's the only way you can learn on the bank. You just have to set up those shots and practice them. And I know last time I really emphasized that. You should find a balance in your game where you spend at least an hour a day practicing. That's how you get better. That's how you improve. You, playing is good. Playing tournaments, all that stuff is great. But when you're playing in a tournament or playing in a match with your friends here, you, you know, you don't work on specific things to improve. We're mostly just trying to win, aren't we? Okay. All right, I'll, I'll uh, break up into partners and I'll come around and work on the drill. Okay. Thank you.